So we are live. We are live. We are live. Let us see. We already have some participants. How great is that? Hi, Riley and Ruth and Mandy. That's so great. Very excited. So um, I am thrilled that we have six artists here today. They have been working with me on the residency, which is on Zoom every day we meet, and they're working on their children's books. And let me tell you, they are incredible. Their ideas are brilliant. They are beta testing my newest course, which is called My Kid Book Pitch. You can find out more at makeartthatsells.com. They're beta testing, but that's not really the right word because they're actually doing it. They're not sort of trying it out there. They're doing their course, they're, they're doing their books. They're doing their books and their ideas are so inventive. Um, this, um, well, let me just show you. We have, I want you all to be sure you're signed up on our mailing list because next week you can download this free 28 page booklet of, um, of craft projects and art projects and word stuff and fabulousness this this is a memory game by trina dl so make sure you're on our mailing list for this gorgeous artivities book something you can do during this time so now let me introduce each one of the artists first bambi you want to wave bambi bambi lives in california don't you live like on the, the foothills of the sierra nevadas or something Yes, Northern California. Yeah, that's so great. Um, she has worked on books. Washington clients include Washington Post. She's done a spiritual journal, a new book. She just finished Palm Reading for Beginners. Um, and we're delighted to have her with us today. She's just been with us since last year. Erica Root, you want to give a wave? She lives in Pennsylvania. That is my, where I was raised. She's worked on calendars, paper and pattern book. Uh, she's worked for Sterling Publishing, Workman Publishing, Running Press. And she is in the midst of working on a book that we pitched together, her own author illustrated nonfiction adult book with the top publisher. We're thrilled about that. Kellyanne Dalton, give a wave. She's worked on lots of books. She's from Montana. She's working on two books right now. Her clients include Quarto, The Washington Post, Editions Azu, Stellar, Sellers, and Studio O, with us since last year. Another newbie. Um, and by the way, uh, the artists are going to hold up their books and projects. Um, so we're really excited. So stay tuned to see them uh, hold up products and also answer questions. Kendra Binney is, lives in Oregon. She's been with us since 2018. She's done a ton of greeting cards with all the top publishers. And she's um, done a, a number of projects, but she's just finished a dreamy picture book that will be out and I can't reveal any more till it's um, on the market. Mara Penny is, lives in Oakland where I lived a long time ago. She's worked on a number of wine labels, two fabric collections, an embroidery gift book, um, Practical Magic for Running Press, Like a Girl for Sterling Publishing, and Boston Globe, Gallison, and so forth. Katie Vernon had, lives in Arizona now, and she her clients include Anthropology, BBDO Worldwide, huge agency, Chronicle Books, Disney Hyperion, Ikea, Hallmark, Papyrus, Quarto, Tag, Up With Paper, Washington Post, Workman Publishing. She's been with us since 2015. She's done a number of children's books. Um, Put On Your Owl Eyes with Story Publishing, Practical Magic with Running Press, 
Make Art Every Day with Quarto, Journal of Gratitude, and Plant Inspiration with Stories. So give a round of applause for our people. That would just be me applauding. Um, by the way, um, if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A. So go look at the bottom of your screen. Partic uh, um, the viewers, the attendees, please click on Q&A and put your question in there and we'll do the best we can to answer them. So um, I wanna uh, dive right in. Um, let's start with, um, Mara, do you wanna hold up some of your products and things? Sure. Um, I just got this this last week. It's the journal. Gorgeous. It goes with this guy. Gorgeous. Will you open some of those? Sure. Um, so this is just this that just came out. Literally, I, I think it's out. Um, this it it there's it's a journal. So there's just little guys that are taken from the bigger book. But does it um, have prompts? Um, I actually don't know. Yes, it does. It does. Um, but this one was the, uh, Practical Magic, which is a sister book to Katie's book, um, mm -hmm. that came out. So here's, this is for, uh, it's beautiful. Yes. For the spells for healing. And so those are a bunch of herbs and stuff in there. Mara, um, you get a lot of like spiritual psychic intuitive books. And that's because I think your art has that vibe to it and, and all the symbols you use and so forth. Yeah, yeah. About in that webinar. So yeah. do you think it's, do you love that you get that kind of work? Yes, I do. I love that type of work. That's, yeah, totally my vibe. That's so great. Anything else to show? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I show, I, these also just came out. I'm so excited about <laughs> the uh, fruit and flower wine cans this is delicious by the way that's beautiful um, and that's that was yeah the rosé here's the and the gold foil and the nice paper um <laughs> i made a mask out of my <laughs> fabric that's out right now oh the fat oh hold <laughs> well, that up closer so we can oh. see it's so great um uh, yeah, this, I, this, yeah, this is out right now, this fabric. Um, and then the sticker book that I participated with four other people in um, just came out, uh, which is just fun stickers. I just got this last week, too. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. Was that fun to do? Yeah, totally, with mermaids. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, definitely, it's fun. Um, oh, that's wonderful. Mara, what's the most exciting thing about the course for you, my kid book pitch? It's challenging. I knew it was going to be challenging to begin with, but it's really opened my eyes um, quite a bit for what it takes to get the story out there and really honing in on it and the different perspective that you can look at and the way that you can tell stories. It's just something I had never really considered before. And it was really eye opening and it's exciting. Like I'm excited. I feel like I could really dig into this. I'm excited. Yeah. Like you could really ha have a career of writing and illustrating picture books. I feel like I could now. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I think so too. And, <laughs> and it kind of decodes it. Absolutely. Yeah. It, the it, yeah, it's, it really um, gives a formula to figure out exactly how it works. And I, I, I just love that. I think it's great. So great. By the way, I'm really happy that your internet is working. So Me well. too. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good because she lives in a canyon on a mountain or something and, yeah. and, and she sometimes breaks out, which is sad because we love her. Okay. Um, Katie Vernon. Hey. Hey, you want to show us some stuff? Sure. Um, I thought I'd show this time because I didn't show it in my webinar, um, my Make Art Every Day um, weekly planner. So it's a blank, it has blank days. So you can use it anytime. You can start at any time. But it has um, fun, creative prompts all throughout, some little mini lessons, mm. like how to sketch in public. You could wear a mask. 
<laughs> which oh, we that's... would not oh, yeah. take. Um, and then it has some fun sort of stickers in the back for different categories that you can track your creative progress. And can you show the closer, closer to, yeah, I love those. They're so cool. And it's watercolor. I don't know how well you can see it. And show us the cover again so people know how to order it. Make art every day. So great. And it's through Cordo, but so that was a fun one. Any other things for show and tell? Um, nah. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Do you visualize your art and then the text or vice versa when you're writing your picture book this week? I think that I visualize the art first, but then if a text doesn't come really fast, like it's almost not simultaneous, but if I can't think of a text really fast for the visual, then I just, it kind of moves out of my brain mm -hmm. um, for a book. But I think as an artist, I definitely envision a picture. And if something fits with the words, that's, then I know it's an idea to move forward with. Mm -hmm. And we can't show it, but you already let yesterday. So we're on day four of the, we're, I gave all the artists, these six artists in my residency, the, um, all the PDFs a, a week, they got a week in a day and they are on day four today. Um, and it's amazing how intense, I mean, that's not how it's going to be in real life. It's going to be four weeks long for the actual course. Um, but it's, they were pushed so hard to do the text. And then Katie did uh, a spread that, and she showed us this morning, double page spread. And it's so gorgeous. We can't show it obviously. You, and I don't want any of the viewers who are illustrators, you don't want to show publicly uh, something you're going to pitch to art directors or editors because they wouldn't want that. Just as any project that my artists or any artists work on you cannot show the work until it's on the market for any number of reasons. But I will tell you it was gorgeous and we're really excited. So you can hate me for telling you how great it is and not showing you. I apologize, but there you go. And art directors and editors, if you are watching, by the way, please contact us because we have this gorgeous book full. It's children's book work by our artists. You're going to just freak out. We're happy to send it to you. Um, so just email lilla at lillarogers.com and we will send you a copy if you're an art director and an editor. And if you're interested in getting any of the pitches by these artists, please let us know. Um, okay. Uh, anything? So, oh. Yeah, so that's cool. So you kind of do it back and forth and at the same time and work together. And what's so interesting is I know I, I feel like all of you were probably really frustrated and wanted to like just dig in and draw. Um, but first you had to get that narrative down and it was a lot of cutting and, and simplifying and making it linear and a blobby, a blobby plot sheet I gave you and a bunch of things. Okay, let us move on to Bambi. Bambi, so um, from the mountains of California. Um, Bambi, do you have some things to show? Uh, I don't have any of my products yet. I know, so. but do you have art or no? That bulletin board? Oh. Oh. This is just kind of how I focus my inspiration. See if I can get it in there. I love this thing. Things I'm inspired by. And that plate you did in, in Make Art That Sells, my uh, home decor class, and I loved that. That was a few years ago. Yeah. That's beautiful. So I just collect things and pin them up there and sketches and paint palettes my daughter's done. And oh, and I how often do you put things on there? Is it like regularly or, or you keep things on there for years? Some things stay up for years, like the plate, and then other things come and go. 
Mm. So weekly it's updated. That's so great. And by the way, those of you watching, go to the Q&A panel and type in your questions. We'll get to some of those later. Um, so Bambi, how do you do research? I know the book you're working on has a lot of um, research involved. We can't tell much about it, but how do you like to do research for this or in general, um, Google or library? What do you do? I was a history major, an art history major, so I love research. It's probably one of my favorite parts. And um, so when I get an assignment or a personal project, I usually set up a Pinterest board. And um, I love uh, old bookstores, used bookstores. So for the last ICB class, um, it, I worked on the Pearl text. Yeah. And so I went to the bookstore and bought some books on the ocean. And then I just kind of find things that are inspiring. Mm. You can see that? Are those little shells or rocks? Shells. And then I just sketch them. That's so beautiful. Just keep drawing little bits of the scene I want to portray. Mm. And then they make it in. Yes. To the final art. And see. Oh, hold that a sec. That is so beautiful. That is so, so beautiful. There's the, some of the little pieces. And do you find doing research, does that get you excited and motivated? I assume so. Yeah, it does, especially when I'm working on portraits, which I've been doing quite a bit lately. Mm. Uh, if it's a writer, I try and read their books at least some of their book, depending on the time I have. Um, if there's a movie about the person or the subject, I watch it. And um, just to find those special bits that make the person come alive when you draw them. Um, Elizabeth writes, love the idea of Pinterest board for each project. I can't wait to start that today. Thank you, Bambi. Sure. Thanks. Somebody wrote that. Um, that's great. Well, it's so interesting. So for all for these six artists who are in the residency this week, what's so cool is, and correct me any of you if I'm wrong, but I don't think they initially started out thinking, I'm going to write this sort of, this piece that's kind of uh, biographic, autobiographical. But I think what happened as we discussed um, is that, oh, somebody's question popped away, put it back in. Oh, I know. I bet Kim did. Kim, did you say? Uh, oh, I think Kim's working in the background. Um, but but uh, as we talked, Erica, you, you revealed the close relationship you had with somebody we won't say that <laughs> is in your story. And so many of you um, have realized that it is very personal in so many ways. Um, so let's see, uh, we have a question from Nita, Katie, where do you get your inspiration from? Do you want to unmute? Oh, she, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, I love to go thrifting. I get a lot of inspiration looking at other people's junk and, <laughs> um, I've also just had a lot of weird jobs throughout my life that continue to inspire me. Um, like what? I worked in an old book bindery. I worked on a alpaca farm for a bit and um, I was in landscaping and I was a florist. Lots of stuff. That landscaping, that's cool. And so that all that your past gives you inspiration and in those jobs. Absolutely. Those, yeah. those funky stores. Okay. Um, there's a question for anyone who wants to answer. Just give me a little wave. Any tips on storing and organizing your finished art pieces when they are painted? I have a big, f Kendra, and I'm gonna actually talk to you next too. Um, well, I was just gonna point because I have it kind of behind me, but the closet's actually full of those, but they're just like those cheap things from Ikea. And I just store my prints, especially in them. 
and then I have them so they don't get damaged and they're still straight and everything. Are they like plastic, big plastic envelopes or like? No, they're wooden? like um, vertical, uh, you know, what are they called? I don't know what they're called. They're, mm -hmm. they're cardboard, so they're fairly rigid, but they're super cheap. You get like three for $2. And I have, I mean, it's closed, but the whole other half of the closet is like There's full so of those. So. Yeah, that, I have flat files that I, I traded my um, Mac Plus. It was the first Mac machine. I traded it for flat files, and boy, did I get the better deal, I think, now, because I still have my flat files. Um, uh, Kendra, while we're at it, would you like to show us some things today? Um, sure. So I have like a bunch of cards and journals I did. Let's see each one. Well, <laughs> there are a bunch of them. Um, this one. Um, this one actually is like fully illustrated on the inside. So it's hard to show the pictures. So everyone is a different picture on the inside. And who's that with if they want to buy that? Um, those are Roger Laborde, and I think most of these cards are also. They have like gold foil, so they're like really pretty. Yeah, they did a beautiful job. Um, and then I did like an illustrated map of the world, which is normally much bigger, but this is just my thing. Some mats, mats work. Yeah, from Make Art That Sells class with Zoe Tucker, who I see is here. Yeah, which yeah. is most of this is, is all of my illustrating kids book work. Um, and then I just have a few like paintings that I hard to see them in a funny light. But I think this was a menagerie painting I did. Oh, was it? Oh, that's cool. I think so. Yeah. And it's actually, it's turning into something else with a company. And then so another that's art. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So beautiful. Um, so is your, the story you're writing this week, which is Fabulous. Um, is it going to be in that? It's going to look like that. Um, well, yes. I mean, it, it'll be very lots of detail because I always put a ton of detail into everything. So lots of detail and a little bit dreamy and surreal. Um, yeah. And it's really great because your story. And again, I apologize, viewers, that we can't talk specifically about the exact stories, but we're trying to give you, um, make it interesting for you with some value. And, and so the beauty of you writing your own story is that you know how you're going to make it look, right? And did you think of that beforehand uh, as you were writing, like you could picture it and? I mostly do not. Um, I wrote, I mean, because I, I write a lot. So I had a lot of stories that were already written out and I didn't have the image part worked out with them, which is why this has been really helpful because I was able to kind of take the stories apart and put them back together. And I think that process helped me have a better vision of how my, my story, my art visual part works with the story part because they were really separate before. And so now I've kind of brought them together in a way that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, you know, um, I was telling all the artists, that these six that I'm working with, as an illustrator or an, a visual artist, you work flat. You see everything at once. It's not sequential, it's not linear. So often cr artists, their ideas for picture books are very sort of fluid and tangential, go here, go there. And what this course does is that, um, <laughs> hi Zoe, is that it's teaching them to make it linear. First I have them sort of fit things into five boxes and then they get maybe 10 boxes and then they storyboard it and then do the dummy and, and then they can illustrate. Um, so that was one of the challenges. Um, Kendra, you had a story beforehand. Right. And so you had to then do those things to kind of focus it. Is that right? Was that hard? Yeah. 
Um, no, well, it was, it was scary <laughs> because like I usually have, I mean, I have so many ideas and so many stories, but it's really easy when you don't have like a, like a real structured way of working. It's really easy to just when things get a little difficult with a story or when there's a problem with a story that you can't quite work out or explain to just ignore that and move on to the next idea. So this was really helpful to kind of be forced to put my story in a way that made sense and actually address the parts that maybe I wasn't able to explain so well. Uh. You no, know, and then I was able to kind of take them apart and put them back together in a way that I could explain to someone. Yeah, and you know, and there's the arc. There's the beginning and the end, and and the problem that's stated in the beginning, and how do you get to the end? What activities do you do? And and sometimes people really love talking about writing about the activities, but have no clue how it's going to resolve. Um, so, and I know that was a challenge for some of the artists this week. Okay, let us go to Kellyanne. Kelly Ann, let me go to my gallery view. Um, do you think you can show us? Yes, you do. I know you do. And I do. Um, my first book came out, Chemistry for Kids. It's by Liz Heineke, who is a scientist, a science writer. And um, it's a, a <clears throat> an experiment book for kids that has these beautiful photos in it. But I got to do the portraits of each of the scientists. Um, I think some of you may have seen the Mary Curie, uh, who worked with radium and died an early, terrible age. Um, uh, Rachel Carson, who did a lot of environmental research in the 60s. Uh, she saw DDT coming into the air and going through into the animal food streams and the waters. Um, but of course, people didn't listen to her too much because she was a woman. <laughs> Um, and, but the other thing that was really cool about this book is it goes through science and history. Um, so I got to research lots of different per time periods in history um, and, uh, and work on the scientists and what they were known for, um, which was great. So there are 25 portraits, 25 experiments. I think it's good for seven and up. Um, I know I would love to do some of them. So Will you show us the cover again so people know how to yeah. find it? And it's called Kitchen Pantry Chemistry for Kids, right? Yeah, yep. And it just came out last week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Right. And they have all kinds of children photos of them, right, doing the experiment. Yeah. It, they're super easy step by step and um, I think it was Amber Procaccini that did all the photography and uh, she did a great job too. It's just a bright fun book. Yeah it's beautiful. Um, oh and it's Quarto. I'm sorry through Quarto as well. Yeah. But yeah yeah. And you know it's interesting Kellyanne was an economist and now she gets these sciencey of course you know as an artist I lump all of science in one thing it's probably appalling to but you know she has that science mind and she gets that kind of job and i always find it so interesting what my artists attract it's so interesting and i i just you know does it seep through the ether or from their brain or is it in the art somehow um sometimes obviously you know if you draw um palmistry imagery you're gonna get palmistry books i get that or if you do maps you're going to get maps but but it is just really fascinating how that works um okay let's see kelly and did you have a story beforehand i did so i actually a character popped into my brain about 14 years ago and so i've been developing and writing her um as a book series for like middle grade ages chapter books Mm -hmm. um, off and on, you know, same thing as can you start when it gets hard, you move on to something else. So, um, so yeah, so I decided to take, um, basically the bare bones of this story and try to, um, turn it into a children's book because mm -hmm. when I'm writing, I always see everything in my head and I'm like, Oh, this would be so beautiful to draw. I wish that middle grade books were fully illustrated, but, um, <laughs> yeah. And then you had to convert it to you are converting it um, in part to a 
picture book, which will allow you to paint your gorgeous, gorgeous art throughout, which is cool. Yeah. The themes running through it are um, very simple. So it has been a little easy to, you know, take maybe more older kid themes and um, just break them down very simply um, into something for kids. Yeah. Um, I want, I see Zoe is here and in the, in the chat, she is answering Rachel Schmeidel's question. Thank you so much, Zoe. That's amazing. Um, and, and she's reminding people, if you haven't taken the illustrating children's book course that she and I do together, she says we cover a lot of that in the course, something about a bleed or something like that. Um, I want to remind everyone, take my illustrating children's book class that I do with Zoe because the writing course starts in the, the Zoe class, the children's illustrating children's book class starts in July and the writing a picture book course starts in October. So you will be in very, very good shape. Raise your hand artists. Um, how many of you took the picture book il illustrating children's book class? Yeah. So, um, and several times and they're in a very good, well positioned now to illustrate their book. Um, so I want to encourage you all to do that. Oh, Riley says sign up now. Thank you, Riley. Looking forward to chatting soon. Um, okay, Erica, do you have some things to show us today? So I don't have anything out in the world yet, but I have um, just some of my artwork that um, I've done, most of which was done in that. I think it's pretty funny. I've, we've chatted before about how almost everything in my website is from, like my whole portfolio is from Matt's courses. So. I always find that pretty interesting. What a wonderful child that is that you drew. I remember all that from class. Yeah. Um, S Saturday Roswell says, Erica, you are the bomb. <laughs> Thanks. Um, to all panelists, your fan club is here, says Riley. Lynn Gaines says, best course ever, cannot recommend enough. Thank you so much. Um, and all these artists I took from Make Art That Sells, didn't I? Yes. Um, okay, so I have a question for you, Erica. What's the most exciting thing about the course or that was helpful so far that you found as you um, So I have found that it's been really, I'm really excited to be able to incorporate like a lot of these illustration ideas that I've had, but I didn't really have a place to put them. So, mm -hmm. um, and I've also been able to sneak in some little tidbits and memories from my childhood, which is, I think, a really special way to, you know, give tribute to some of your past without making it too overwhelming for someone that's reading the story. They don't even have to know. But um, you don't always have the opportunity to do that when the text or the story isn't your own. So this mm -hmm. is a really cool way to just like put your text in your, it's just like a big mush of who you are, but it's being made really interesting for someone else to look at. Um, and on that note, it's been helpful to use the course material and worksheets to get the story idea from being like this tangled, ball of yarn in my brain into something that's in a format that I can really work with, which is, I would, I would say one of the hardest things because I know that a lot of us had mentioned that you have these ideas and as an artist, you're like, okay, this is really hard. I can't find where I'm going with this On to the next thing. So this really forces you to work with that and, and figure it out. Oh, that's really great to hear. And you've done a fantastic job. I'm going to ask some questions. Um, Abby Jacobs asks, um, wow, how long did that illustrated journal take to complete? Oh, I realize I don't know who, Abby, will you type that in again and let me know who that is directed to? Um, Anna Bianchi, and any of you can answer artists, okay? Just blurt it out. Um, Anna Bianchi says, can an author illustrator also pitch publishers as only an illustrator? If so, how can one use being an author illustrator as an advantage to get to illustrate other authors' books? And Zoe Tucker, my co-teacher, who is not only a top art director, beloved art director, but she also is now a published children's book author of a few books, which is phenomenal. She started by writing them for the course, and they got picked up. 
Zoe writes, hi, Anna, you absolutely can pitch as both. Most art directors and designers assume that anyway. It puts you in a really powerful position if you can write and illustrate. Even if you feel less confident on the writing, just having the seed of an idea can be enough and the publishing team will then work on work with it work with you to develop it more would help if I could read anyway thank you Zoe um, Jamie Park has a question for Bambi Bambi how much of your process is traditional and how much is digital do you paint all the pieces separately then assemble in Photoshop um, what are your thoughts any artists can say I usually start with um, pen and ink and this was for another ICB class and I just draw and you know like with the pigeon I just drew a ton of different pigeons from super realistic to you know love that hair <laughs> I love hair um and then I um I take them like I'll do watercolor and color separately um these are my Sorry, these are more just sketches. And then I um, do textures. This was for the pearl one. Oh, you do the, okay. And then you scan all that in. Yeah, and like this is the rock, part of the rock and some of the seaweed. And I'll just get loose. Because um, once I take them into digital, I tend to get really uptight. So I like to start traditionally and then work with them in Procreate now, used to be Photoshop. Yeah. yeah, On an iPad Pro? Yes. And uh, do you color in then in Procreate? I do in both. I'll do washes and scan those in and use them and then clean them up and draw over them in Procreate. And then color in Procreate also. Okay, so Abby has a question. She said it was for Kendra. Wow, how long did that illustrated journal take to complete? Um, well, so for for this for this one, the company, I think they commissioned like maybe twelve total images from me, and then they made, I mean, I think they made fifty or sixty different items from them. I mean, they made, wrapping paper and gift bags and journals and like stationary sets and all sorts of things. So, which was really cool because I wouldn't have thought to use my art in all the different ways they did. So this was, it, they just, they took all the different parts like, of things I had drawn for them. Like and, layers? Yeah, well, I mean, so, yeah. So they like would take, kind of take little parts of things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just they took the little birds from one of my, pieces and so, so it didn't take me any time because I didn't have to actually make the journal but it was like I think 12 different paintings that I made for them that's really really good to know um mm -hmm. yeah because it looks like you spent a year um, <laughs> um but of course her art is so rich and lush and there's so much in there that they can do that with her work okay that was Kendra how many of you finish in Procreate, asks Saturday Roswell. Um, you want to raise your hands and you can chime in. So that's Katie, Kellyanne, Erica, and Bambi. Okay. Um, so answered that. Greg, nice to see you, Greg Vineyard. Hi from Greg V. Has spending more time indoors during our global, global, current global situation helped you leap to new levels in your art processes. Anybody want to answer that? Spending time indoors, Mara. Um, I think that actually the, the remote artist residency has actually been perfect for that because I'm not going anywhere <laughs> here all day, every not day. All the time in the world. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and I just feel like I've grown a lot in the last couple of days just based on that class. So oh, thank you, Mara. Well, you know, when I work with top talent like this, it's, it's homeopathic. I just do a little drop and you guys go, Poof. of course, that little drop is about a hundred pages, but 
you know. Okay. Um, Martina says, did you ever realize uh, that lots of kids' book characters have lots in common with the author, illustrator, sometimes also physical elements? It often happens to me that when I see the illustrator in real life, I think, oh, yes, that's a match. Anybody want to answer that? And before you do, I want to say, so when I was in illustration school, um, I, so I was in my 20s, so, you know, I dyed my hair a different color, like, every month or so, and my characters then would have the hair, the red hair, or the blonde hair, or the black hair, or whatever, so. That was before they had purple and blue. I wish they would have had that then in the, in back in the olden days. Anybody want to answer, how, do you draw, like, your, yourself, your people? They're thinking. Like, do they look like that? What is that? Yeah, do they look like you? Do your people look like you? Um, I think the thing is because these artists, these are artists I represent, they work with so many different projects. They have the ability to draw different kinds of children and adults. Um, Erica immediately comes to, to mind, says Martina. No, it says Greg. <laughs> Okay, um, someone asked about your work schedule. Um, wh how, what kind of work schedule do you keep? I'd love if you all chimed in on this one at a time. Katie, you want to start? How do you start um, <coughs> or your week? Well, it, it's basically full time, or it used to be before um, the coronavirus. <clears throat> but I try to get at least four hours in every day. I think that's a full day of creative work is about four hours for me. Um, Honestly, a lot. Yeah, so, and sometimes it gets broken up and I have to fit it in different places, but I prefer like a chunk of time, just carving it out, ideally at the beginning of the day, but. You like to work at the beginning? Is that yeah, your Yeah, definitely. And you have a seven-year-old? Seven She'll be eight next week. Yeah. Wow. So and she's home. You're home with her. Yeah. And how is that? How is it to have work and your daughter and homeschooling and all that? It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. We're getting through it. Um, but obviously, it can't be. It's not the same as it was. So we're all, you know, making changes, making sacrifices, but it's also been a special time to be with her and see more of her. So, you know, it's got its ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, it is. That's what I hear from people. Um, Kellyanne, do you want to answer that? How you work, your work schedule? Yeah. So I don't have any kids. <laughs> and my husband lets me do whatever I want. Um, so I love working on like baker's hours. I like to get up at four o'clock in the morning and work, um, like chuck out my day. So I'll do like a four hour work time. And then I'm also a uh, trail runner. So then I'll just go out for a couple of hours and run in the trails, grab some lunch, um, and then do another like shift, um, early afternoon. And then by like two, I've had a full entire day and then I can take a nap. Great. Great. So, Naps are fantastic because yeah. they get a whole second chunk. Yeah. And then if I'm working, like now I'm working on a crazy big project. So I'm actually doing like three or four days in one day, which. You know what I think would be interesting is, um, I, so I, I never had a real job. I've, I've been an entrepreneur in the arts my whole time, um, except when I taught middle school when I was out of college. But I don't understand how people can work eight hours without a nap in the middle, you know? And I wonder if people will um, now start taking naps, siesta, you know, siesta in the middle of the day. I wonder if that's going to change things. Um, as people work from home more and more. Anyway, that's a little sidebar. Erica, you want to talk about your work day, your schedule? Do you plan it out? Is it the same every day? Is it different? Um, I try, but I mean, 
I'm also homeschooling my son, which has been, I mean, I can, the only word that comes to mind is interesting because <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's crazy. And then like, I'm trying to get stuff done and there's like all of a sudden like a masked ninja running behind me on rollerblades. And I'm like, this is, I've never had to work like this before. So at this point in my life, I feel like a schedule is a little, um, a little bit of a dream, but I try my, I mean, I usually do um, a couple hours in the day. And then after everyone goes to bed, I'm up like, I have terrible sleep habits. So I'm usually up till like one or two in the morning drawing. Um, and then I start all over again and try to get done whatever I can, like kid wise. And, but yeah, I mean, I just try to squeeze in it. It's not for me, it's not like, oh God, I have to like do the dishes at one in the morning. This is awful. It's something I enjoy so much that it's, it, it's joyful for me. It's not, it's not a burden. And I love sneaking in that time when I can. Mm -hmm. That's so great. So great. Um, Mara, how what's your work process like? And you've got, you have two kids at home. I do. Yeah. One's about to be 13 and the other one's 15. So it's a little bit easier for me. Um, but, um, I really tried to actually change my work schedule about a year and a half ago. And I my ideal work would be like 10 PM until like 3 AM. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Once everyone like goes to bed, I'm like, Oh, this is nice. I can do it. But I realized that's super unhealthy and I was napping every single day. <laughs> um, and so I've really been trying not to do that. And um, so I normally would work when they were in school and then they'd come home and, you know, I'd work a little bit at night, but I try not to do that anymore. Mm. Thank you. Bambi, how about you? How do you do it? Big fan of the nap. Um, my personal work's basically gone out the door. Um, it's homeschool and kids and just, uh, seeing after her needs, which is pretty much all day. And it's been really great to have this time with her and it's really special. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, with my day job and assignments and then taking care of my daughter there's just I have very little time to doodle unless I do the 10 to 3 schedule when everyone's sleeping so. oh, the 10 p.m the Mara yeah. style yes yeah. that's yeah this is interesting well and when you work from home for so long you can do you can morph to all these strange times and all that um, so a million years ago when I was an illustrator, I would stop, uh, at the FedEx deadline when I lived in, when my studios in Manhattan, New York, FedEx was nine o'clock. So I'd leave my studio with my FedEx package and walk by Dean and DeLuca. And if I felt rich, I'd go buy some ravioli there at a billion dollars and bring my package to FedEx and that was the end of my day at nine. We didn't have children and, you know, then I'd go out till midnight and get up at noon the next day. But yes, I was cool way back when. Um, and then when I moved to Boston, FedEx time cut off was 6 p.m. I was like, wait, what? So I had to be done at 6 p.m. And that, that kind of was my time frame. And um, one of the ways I worked, it was before the internet too, was Terry Gross would come on with her show Fresh Air at one o'clock. And um, for you young people, there was a time when you could only watch a thing at an appointed time, appointment radio. So if I wanted to hear her, I need to be ready at one. And that gave me some structure and I would get everything set up and be ready to work at one and work to her. I loved that as an illustrator that you could listen to NPR all day long. I was like the most informed person in the world, you know, because you could listen all day long while you draw. When I write, I can't be listening to talk. Um, so let's see. Um, did everyone get to show their work, by the way? I didn't miss anyone, did I? I showed, okay, good. Um, so I have some, a few more questions before we go, but I wanna show um, products that came in. Um, this is by Julia Christians. This is a middle grade novel that she illustrated 
one of my artists and I hope you can see some of it. Let's get to, oh, here's a good picture. It's fully illustrated in black and white, like most middle grade. Um, lots of great characters. And this just came in. This was by Sarah Papworth. This is phenomenal. Rainbow Revolutionaries, 50 LGBTQ plus people who made history. And let's open it up some. And then we'll have a few more questions and um, we will go Benjamin Banneker. It's a fascinating book because there are people that you maybe didn't know were LGBTQ. Well, Harvey Milk, we knew that. This is a great portrait of him from San Francisco. Let's look at one more. Um, beautiful. Okay. Um, Annette C. Webb asks, do each of you have a studio pet? Who's got a pet? Raise your hand first. You all have pets. I'm so jealous. Oh my God. Okay. Who wants to talk about their pet? Just chime in. I'll go first. Okay. Katie V. She's a like two year old rescue pup. Um, she's half Corgi and half German Shepherd and she's not smart, but <laughs> so cute. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. She can't um, hear you or speak. No. Her. Yeah. So cute. And she's who, else, who else? Oh, let's see. Kendra. <laughs> um, so I actually have, I have two dogs and a cat. Um, but this little kitty was a feral cat that I rescued. And um, she tried to scratch my face off for like two full years. Like she, she, she it took a long time, but now she's like the sweetest cat. Oh. But she just lived in my studio the whole time because she, I couldn't let her into the rest of the house. So oh. she's, she's literally my studio cat. Oh, that's so cute. Who else? Kellyanne, is that a, your puppy? Yeah, this is Lucy. She's a little shy, but she's an Irish wolfhound cross. Uh, mm -hmm. She looks really tiny right there at the angle, but um, she's a big black hairy dog. Wow. Yeah, it does look little from that angle. <laughs> yeah. I also have a miniature schnauzer, so the two of them together are pretty funny. We should do a thing where everybody, all my artists draw their pets. We put it in a newsletter. That would be so amazing. I can't believe you all have pets. I would, but I'm allergic to cats and we're not mature enough to own a dog around here. Um, so, but I, I heard, Bambi, you just told me, didn't you tell me about the one shot? Getting one shot for allergies. I got to look into that because then I'll have a lot of cats and be cat lady. Um, Bambi, you want to, tell us about your pet i have um two dogs they're under the table right now and i have two rabbits and they're <laughs> all usually underfoot let's see if we can get these guys Seriously? <laughs> oh my God. they're right there with you that's so cute the rabbits are put up but they'd be there too that's great um who else wants to share about their pet thank you um, so I have a dog, Lucy, who's laying on the couch back there, the black lump. <laughs> I have a Lucy, too. <laughs> wow. And I also have a black cat, Pips. She's around here somewhere. Yeah. Anybody else want to talk about the pet? Erica? We have two cats, um, and then we found out my son is allergic, so we also have a lot of nasal spray in the house. Mm -hmm. um, but they are mac and cheese, and <laughs> <laughs> one is super duper fat. And the other one, we have to actually hide her food so that the other cat doesn't eat it. It's just like, it's ridiculous. They're, my son has a lot of fun with them. And again, a lot of nasal spray. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I have a question for you um, to shift gears a little bit from the pets. Do you have working from home tips or um, how... Do you have a, um, how, how do you get to work? So let's say you're working on a project. How, where do you go about doing that? I have found that the only way that I can truly be motivated is when I, when I find a space for myself. So 
I've tried to, and every once in a while, like at night, I'll turn on the TV and sit on the couch and, and draw. But for the most part, if I'm really trying to dig in and get focused, I need to have my own dedicated space. And I feel like it doesn't even have to be fancy or big or even your own room. Like literally my space right now that I'm using is a corner of my dining room, but I've made it my own corner of my dining room and surrounded myself with things that I really enjoy and that make me feel inspired and happy. And um, I, I just think that's the most important thing is to make it a space that you feel good about being in. Um, yes. Even if like, every other space in your house is quarters worthy, that one little spot where you can work is super important. And I think uh, <laughs> I have literally kicked my family out of the house. My son is now, I told him to go fly a kite and he's literally flying a kite because I just sometimes need that time and space mm -hmm. to not have um, people begging for snacks. Yeah. Um, and how do you make it your own? What do you put around you? Um, I just have like, even right now, like a, a, I can't show because a lot of it is inspiration for what I'm working on, but I have like photographs around me. I have um, things that are, um, I mean, I love plants. Clearly, I have tons of plants around me. I always have 700 drinks because that's what I like to have around me all day is water and tea and coffee and just things that feel good. That's great. That's wonderful. That's so, it's, I, I totally, well, as you can see, I, you know, have my <laughs> little spot. It's a big spot. Um, Lisa McMillan, and I'd like the artist to answer this. Is there room for a more traditional children's illustration anymore? I don't see realistic art anymore, she asks. I'm kind of, my work is kind of realistic. I mean, and I've gotten, I, I don't see, I mean, I don't see it as much. I think there's differences in like what's popular at different times, but I mean, I think there's still a place for that. I mean, mine is. Well, you draw realistically it's lifelike, it's not exaggerated or distorted. And so it is, in that sense, realistic, but it's very modern in the paint, in the color. So I think if your style is traditional, if it looks like Beatrix Potter, unless it's updated and in your own way, maybe it's not, there's not a place for something that looks like an older style um so but drawing realistically i mean i have several artists who draw realistically jennifer potter um draws pretty realistically um a number of them i think there's always a place if you can draw really well and draw realistically but you do want to update with color with how you paint with the subject matter you pick are you drawing like when you put clothing on your children, the clothes are beautiful, like I would want to buy now if I had little children. So, Kendra, so, you know, you, in that sense, is very modern. Um, and I think what people mean by traditional, um, do they mean old fashioned? But you probably could do an old fashioned style in a cool new way. Does anybody else want to chime in on that? Before we go to the next one, um, let's see. Uh, I'm looking, looking. Um, we have time for about one more question. If you want to put it in the chats, that would be, I'm sorry, the Q&A, not the chats, the Q&A. Um, Brenda Harris asks, what is your favorite mantra in regards to your illustration career? Maybe she means an affirmation or words you say to yourself. Um, I have one. Okay. Um, the one that I tell myself a lot, and I actually even made a little sign in my room, is um, uh, perfect is the enemy of good. Mm. Because I feel like I will often, like, get so panicked that something isn't perfect that I just don't even want to get it finished. And at the end of the day, really, I just need to get it done and have it, you know, be good. I mean, it's always, turned, they always turn out fine. It's just, I just need to tell myself to get them done. Yeah. You know, and, and this is for all of you too, when to achieve excellence, you have high standards, which can be sort of contorted into 
perfectionism. I think it's a really common thing for people who are capable of high levels of excellence. And we've all had to work with how can we overcome that so we don't get stuck and stop and not have the great careers that you all do. You've all figured out how to manage that. I don't think any of you would say, yeah, I don't care. Like I can slap dash, I'll do whatever. I know you all have a really high expectation for yourself. So how do you, I'd love to hear from a few of you, how do you manage um, doing that? Is there self-talk? Do you, Katie Vernon? Well, I'll chime in with my mantra, which is um, comparison is the thief of joy. And I say that to my daughter a lot. And I say that to myself a lot because we're all at different points in our careers and um, different paths. And um, so that helps me just kind of focus on where I'm at and what I'm doing um, and stay joyful in my work instead. For me, when I was an illustrator, it was the night before I had to I knew what I was going to work on the following day. I had it all in post-it notes on a calendar. And so the night before I'd know what I was going to do and I would lie down, shut my eyes and wait till I, I just sort of start drawing it in my head and wait till I was really, really excited. And then when I got to it the next morning or day, I was excited. I couldn't wait to dive in to do that cool part of it. And until I had that, it would just, if I didn't have that, it would be drudgery and nobody wants to buy drudgery. People buy your joy, as I always say. So um, I found something I was excited about. Somebody else, what do you use? I'll go. Um, I don't have one affirmation. I um, try to journal every morning and at the end of my journal, I'll put like, a little like focused affirmation for that day, which always changes. So like one day, if I have a lot to get done, I'll say focus or all is well, or get it done or just whatever I need to hear for myself for that day. I'll write that down. Oh, that's wonderful. Anybody else? I don't really have an affirmation so much as I, I need to plan things out ahead of time. And even if I do like a, like I'll do it like bricks of teeny tiny thumbnails that nobody would know what they were. If I get that all done, then I can process, just process it and everything can change, but it makes it easier for me to move forward and be excited about it. Yeah. Another thing that I do, whether it's in the, if there's something to, a project in the agency or writing a new course or something like that. And I told my kids this when they were home, they're now in their twenties. If you're stuck, break it down into a smaller bit. If you're still stuck, break it down into another in more smaller bits, break it down till those little tiny chunks are doable. And for me, if I, I need to really break things down and be really organized. So I know exactly what I'm going to focus on and it's manageable because I have too many ideas like creative people do. So you want to be clear and focused about the one thing you're going to put your energies into. Sugar Cookie asks, is it okay to pitch during a pandemic? I will answer that as an agent. Yes, it totally is. Art is still needed. Books are still being published, uh, magazines, internet stuff, products, and all that. Excuse me. Um, Riley Wilkinson says, how do you reset your head when you move to a new assignment after working on a large assignment? Anybody want to take that? How do you reset? Erica. Um, for me, I'm also like Bambi, a huge researcher. I love the process of research. So a lot of times I'm super intimidated even by a project when um, something new comes in or even like a math assignment, like anything that there's that a shift from what I've been doing. So I find that once I, I really start digging into the research and find a piece of that thing that's interesting to me or that's fascinating or that's beautiful or that's just plain like bizarre and goofy and weird. Like once you have something to cling on to, it really starts to flourish from there. But um, without like, I just feel like 
me personally, without that research, I just kind of feel like I'm grabbing for ideas that maybe aren't even my own. So it's just, it, for me, that's the best way to shift gears into a new topic or subject. Um, Kendra, did you want to answer that too? Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm really, really messy when I paint um, and I do collage. So like at the end of a project, there's like pieces of paper and different paints and supplies like literally on like every inch of my floor and work surfaces and stuff. So one of my, I hate, usually hate cleaning, but one of my favorite things is when I finish a project, I'll clean up the space and put all the things from the last project away. And then when I start a new project, it's a brand new clean space to, you know, turn into a huge mess again, but it's, yeah. it's nice to reset physical, you know, my physical space that way. That's a really good point. And that the physical cleaning and changing kind of clears the head. Yeah. I, I try to tidy up my, my desk the night before. So when I come in, it's peaceful looking. Last question, Renee asks, and I'll ask each one of you, what are your five year goals? <laughs> what are your five year goals? Five year goals. What would you could also say what a dream project would be or what a fantasy project or what you're hoping for. So let's start with Katie Vernon. Uh, I mean, honest, it is honestly to write and illustrate a children's book, at least one. Several. Several, and go on a speaking tour and, you know, read them all over the country. I can see that. I'm going to help you do that. Yay. Because I believe in you. Fabulous. Okay, Kellyanne. I thought I had an answer, but I don't really. I'm just excited to see what avenues my career goes in now over the next five years, because I know it's just going to be crazy and I'm never going to believe it, but it'll be fun. I love that. So you're open, but you know it's going to be good. Yeah. That's wonderful. I know it will be too, and I'll help you. Erica. Um, I also don't have anything specific. I feel like this journey for me is so new and I'm so excited to just like see where it's going to take me. And I feel like the same, like the children's book, writing and illustrating a children's book and seeing that out in the world would be incredible. And just really to, um, through maybe a story and pictures, um, make a connection to a child that maybe didn't feel they had one before. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Well, you know, and you already are um, writing and illustrating a nonfiction uh, book. And so I do see a lot more of that in your future. It's a natural. Mara. I really would like to have a large home decor line with everything. <laughs> with, yeah, yeah, bedding and shower curtains and mm -hmm. fabric and dishes and the whole thing. Yeah, I, that's actually something I've wanted to do since I was in, I think, middle school. Wow, that yeah. will happen. And your background was in design, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Design and illustration. Yeah, yeah, I would love that. But um, you're very busy with wine labels and books right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. Bambi, five years from now, what do you see? Hmm. I'm just excited to keep growing and evolving with my art and my style and see where it goes. And mm. um, I didn't know it, but this course has showed me that I'd very much like to write and illustrate my own book. It's been really rewarding so far and exciting to realize I can do it so I definitely see that in your future I really do it brings together your art and your ability to draw people and children and your your interest in doing research um, which is nice sort of from a stem perspective too or an educational perspective yeah, that's cool. I like how you started out with, you want it to be, you know, you just want to see how your art develops. And that's a really good way to think about any, anyone's future as a creative person. Like what cool stuff am I going to make? Like, how's my work going to get better? That's pretty neat. Kendra. 
Um, well, specifically, like everyone else, I would like to illustrate a book that I've written. So I'd like that to happen. Um, and then maybe a little further than five years, maybe around five years, but I would love to be in a position where I am able to maybe work on some of the less traditional books ideas I have. Like I have a graphic novel idea and I would like to someday have that ready to develop and pitch also. Wonderful. I'm excited to be a part of that and help you make that happen. Well, this has been wonderful, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, all of you that were watching us today. Art directors, I want to tell you, again, reach out to us if you would like, and editors, if you would like this um, booklet of children's book work by my artist. It's pretty fabulous. Don't forget to make sure you're on our newsletter so you get our Artivities booklet that comes out next week. This is Katie Vernon's piece, which is cool. Um, go to makeartthatsells.com to sign up for illustrating children's book class that I teach with Zoe Tucker, or what we've all what we're all working on this week together. These artists and I are working on the My Kid Book Pitch course, which comes out in October, but you can sign up for that now. And um, I hope you found this helpful. I am certainly excited to see six amazing picture books by these artists out on the market in the future. So um, thanks again, everybody. I really am glad that you are all here. Thank you for your wonderful comments. And don't forget next, next, Thursday, Kim, who is next? Thursday? Oh, Sarah Jo. We'll, I'll be interviewing Sarah Jo next Thursday at uh, 12.30 Eastern Time for a webinar. You can get the link in the newsletter. So make sure, being on the newsletter, you get all the goodness. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. And we will see you next Thursday. Bye. <laughs>